Hi guys, it's Giorgio at Optics Warehouse, and today I'm going to do another one of our FAQ series. Uh, I haven't done it in a while, we need to collect some questions, but hopefully got ones here that are going to solve a few riddles for you. So to start off with, first question, PARD, 12mm or 16mm, which one's best for me? So really, it depends how you're using it a little bit. The 12mm will give you a wider field of view. Uh, good for close-in stuff, stuff like that. But the 16mm, well, yes, it's a narrow view, slightly more zoomed in optically. It's not a massive difference. It's not a decision that needs to be really threaded over. Uh, another thing to consider is the scope that you're putting onto there. So for lower magnification scopes, the 12mm does work better because of that wider field of view. The bigger exit pupils, it can see more of that. If you're using a higher magnification scope, say a 624, or you're just naturally shooting on higher mags, you know, the 8s and 10s, stuff like that, then the 16 will work better. And you've got to remember, it's not going to affect your field of view so much in this, once you've got the scope on there, because the scope has its own field of view and is essentially acting as the zoom lens of the camera. Um, so really, it boils down to horses for courses. Um, to my mind, most importantly is that scope for me i use a 12 mil because i shoot with a 416 and i don't really ever go above six magnification with my setup so i use a um, 12 mil uh, if i was using a 624 i'd probably go for a 16 mil so that's question one question two the crt style stocks for the tikas does that fit the standard tika t3s in short no no it doesn't the tika crt is the um, compact, I've got to remember this, it's the compact tactical uh, rifle, yeah, compact tactical rifle. Um, they are, they have a different base plate to them for the magazine system. It's more like a um, sort of semi AR style where you've got a proper box mag that drops out and with, I think it's a paddle release, which is a bit different to the standard T3, uh, sort of more slimmer. Uh, uh, synthetic magazines uh, so it is a completely different fitment on those uh, third question what magnification do I need for FT bit of a varying question because there's more than one way to skin a cat so to speak um, standard um, sort of orthodoxy is you use as high a magnification as you can so at minimum and as again bit of a guideline really more than a rule so 30 mag as a minimum most people nowadays are using 40 to 50 magnification it's not that you're going to shoot on that magnification what you're doing is you're using that high magnification for the range finding effect and what i mean by that is you crank up your magnification you look at something by your target uh, whether it be a cobweb where the paint's chipped or the post that it's standing on, the wood grain, and you turn your side focus, your parallax, until it's in as sharp an image as possible, uh, usually with a big side wheel, and then that will tell you what distance it's at. On lower magnifications, that's a lot harder to do, and so that's why you use the high mags in FT. It is purely that range finding. You can then obviously crank it right down to shoot it, if that's what you prefer. Uh, there are guys I've heard of using fixed 20 mag scopes though and bracketing and doing just fine. So it's really down to the style of shooting that you learn. Um, as I said, there's more than one way to skin a cat. But the orthodoxy is high magnification, 30 plus for the range finding. Question number four. Why do we have small objective lenses for HFT? So HFT is kind of... Um, sort of a, it was a spin-off of FT as a competition, um, the idea being um, to try and equalise the field amongst everybody because people were just buying big magnification scopes and beating those who couldn't afford it. What they do in there is they limit you to a, a maximum of 12 magnification. Most people set it around 10 because that's what the reticules are true on. Um, the reason you'd have that smaller objective is yes, it is letting in less light, but what that does is the bigger objectives, they flatten your image. 
So yes, it all looks more in focus over your distances, basically your focal length is, I think it's decreased. Uh, or probably they've got it the wrong way around there. But basically, with a big objective, say a 50, 56, your image is gonna look nice and flat, nice and bright, but it's gonna be a lot harder to judge or gauge that distance naturally with your own depth perception. With a small objective, say a 24, 32, maximum 42, uh, you're going to get, basically, things in close look blurry, things far away look blurry, things where you've centered your parallax look nice and clear, and you can tell, sort of just by gauging it with your eyes, how far away it is. Um, and so that's why you have those different objectives. Final question for today. Is a red dot good for pest control in the UK? Now, it depends on what you mean by pest control, really. If you're talking rats, rabbits, um, squirrels, things like that, using an air gun, no, not really, um, to put it bluntly, uh, purely because they're not a precise tool to use. They are a red dot that you put on something, squeeze trigger for quick target acquisition. Uh, boar hunting, however, um, red dots are used very often or is one of the go-to optics for it because it's quick you can get on target quickly and move through as you're shooting um i have seen people use them for deer um, i don't personally think that's the best option unless you're shooting pretty close range um, and then obviously low light capability well it's down to your eye um, so usually they are used for um well, in a pest control setting anyway, they are used for larger animals, such as boar, stuff like that, uh, coyotes and things like that, mostly stateside, uh, that are going to be moving where you just need to be quick on them. Uh, but for things like rats, rabbits, squirrels, pigeons, all that sort of thing in the UK, you're most likely going to want some form of optic and you're going to want it to be night vision compatible as well. Uh, so I hope that has answered some questions for you guys. Uh, if you want if you've got any more, please comment them down below and they might be in the next FAQ. Uh, if you have any questions that you need to ask us, give us a call and I'll see you next time. All right, cheers. Thank you. Bye-bye.